Hey everyone, Justin from EWC here alongside my colleague Robert. And today we would like to introduce you to a little something we're calling Wear, Collect, or Melt. So this is a format you probably recognize from another game, also with three categories. Uh, we won't say that name here, obviously. <laughs> but the idea being that we're going to have three watches that have some similarity between them. And the idea is that we will decide between the two of us which one we would wear, which one we would choose to keep or collect, and which one we're melting down for the metal. Um, we may not agree. We may. We'll see how this goes. Uh, today we're going to start with some stainless steel icons of the watch world. We have a white ceramic Daytona, the new 116500. We have a 15202 AP Royal Oak, and we have the classic Paddock Nautilus 5711. So, Robert, take it away with your uh, wear collector melt. Where are you going with this one? Well, I think we should start with what these kind of have in common with each other, because... You know, we have one chronograph, we have two time onlys, we have two prestige brands, and then we have Rolex, which, you know, there's lots of discussion to be had there as well in terms of how they fit within the history of watchmaking. But um, I think what we have here that's really interesting is we have three watches where the market has determined the value of these watches in a way nobody saw coming. You know, Daytonas were always kind of hard to get, at least when you get to the automatic Daytonas. Um, but the AP Royal Oak and the Paddock Nautilus for the longest time were fairly common watches and often discount watches. So Unloved, honestly, from the beginning. Especially historically. Right. Good point. The, the phenomenon recently of these being way over retail is it's just kind of fascinating to me because it shows how the watch market is almost a true democracy right. in that things are truly worth whatever somebody's willing to pay. 100%. And whatever the manufacturer says it's worth is secondary. Right. And yeah, does not matter whatsoever. Yeah. So if I'm picking one of these watches that I'm going to wear personally, uh, for me, it is the Royal Oak 15202. Uh, I think that one of the things I like about this watch is that this is truest to the original. If you look at a 5402 from the 1970s, the proportions and the way it fits and the thinness of the bracelet are all extremely similar, if not damn near the same as the original. And I really, I respect that from AP, that they are honoring that tradition. And for me, just in terms of putting that on the wrist, it's the best feel. And it's, there's something about the design that to me just gives it a little bit more kind of visual interest than the Daytona or the Nautilus with the exposed screws and things like that. I mean, that. like you said, 39 millimeters, petite tapisserie, like it is the classic, you know, almost shot for shot remake of that of that original 5402. So, all right, I see, I see your reasoning, continue. Then for the watch that I would keep or collect, uh, obviously going to have to go for the paddock. Um, so here we have paddock uh, 5711, which uh, does have some differences from the original 3700, but is basically, until recently, their closest offering to the original. This is obviously now discontinued. Um, part of my reason, as this is my collecting piece, is that the 5811, which has just been released, is white gold and it's slightly bigger. And so I feel like there is going to be a desire for these watches moving forward as it is the best modern Nautilus that, they're ma that they made. Because they're not it's making it anymore. But okay, continue. Right, of course, that's what we're here <laughs> for. Uh, so yeah, this would be the one that I would hold on to. Um, and it is a great watch, of course. But for me, the melt box item, would have to be the Daytona. Come on. I, I love a Daytona. Daytona's great. It's a perfect watch. But at, at the end of the day, it's, I don't know. There's something missing for me. Oh, my God. What? It, I mean, I don't. I, I, I like it's you. It's just a Daytona, but it's just a Daytona. I like you, and you're a nice guy. <laughs> and I don't want to tell you that you're wrong, but you're wrong. So for me to wear something that I can put on my wrist beat up, not care about, know that it's going to always be able to come back. I can have it serviced anywhere, you know, reasonably priced. 
at retail, the Daytona. It's an everyday piece that you can strap on, not need to worry about. It's not flashy. Yes, in the past few years, it's become something of, you know, a hyped must-have luxury item. But when that wears off, at the end of the day, this is still an incredible, just durable You could say that, that for all wear. of them, though, that they, because we're talking about designs that really have not changed True. for 40, 50 years. Um, but so this one to wear. Are, but I, I get your wearability to wear. standpoint. This, um, so speaking as a guy who's wearing a 14790, I love this watch, and I'm actually going to choose the 15202 as my collect piece, but... These are scratch magnets. They're incredible pieces. They're so beautiful. I absolutely love the way it feels on the wrist, everything about it, but I would be so scared to wear, you know, a perfect pristine 15202. Even just going underneath my cuff, I'm going to end up with scratches all over it, and I'm OCD enough. Anybody that knows me will attest to this, that that would drive me absolutely insane. It's not that bad. It's, it's not that bad. You can wear these bad. watches. It's you can wear bad. You wear it's yours every day. And I do. Great. I do. It it's beautiful. Great. I love it. But this is vintage. Whatever. Anywho. <laughs> so my choice for wear is the modern ceramic Daytona. Just great everyday piece. You don't have to worry about. You can beat it up. Awesome. Collect. I'm going with the Royal Oak 15202. Um, I just think that it is, it's such an iconic design. You know, Genta, the the story of it, you know, drawn by Genta the night before Basel in 1972, you know, at, at the request of um, AP's managing director, you know. There's a lot of romance there. There's a, yeah. so much romance. There's such a great story. And honestly, for me personally, the way that I approach watches is I have to have a real connection with them. You know, specs and power reserves and all that doesn't necessarily do it for me. I'm a more emotional person, so I really connect with, you know, the story of the, you know, the 15202, the 5402, um, and just that entire history, I think, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a special piece. The Nautilus is a beautiful watch. It's a great piece. It's derivative. So, you, Genta, are Genta, you are Genta, relegating the King Nautilus correct. to the melt pile. Throw this in the smelter, melt it down, it and make, make me a paperweight. <laughs> it's a great piece, but when it comes to, for me personally, the, the baggage that comes with this watch, it's such... It's a beautiful piece, and I love it. But it's 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 got a lot of baggage with it. It's just a, you know, it's it's it's, it's a must-have piece that for, baggage for luxury. Maintain? Will this no. the status and the icon no. of all three of these? Will this maintain, or is this going to go back to when this was offered at a discount? Are we going no. to go back oh to that gosh. time where I you wish know, it's I like, wish. It's, but never. It's just the Nautilus. No. Are we going to get to that point? Of course not. Are you no. kidding me? No, I don't think so. I mean, especially the way the way that Paddock is treating this at this point, you know, moving on to the new generation, all of the special editions that they've done, you know, they've leaned so heavily into this is a special piece. This is an important piece. Everyone knows. The market knows, you know, it's just I think it's too ingrained in in, you know, the the public consciousness that it's it's never going to be back to, oh, that's just another stainless steel sports watch. Also, like I said, designed in 1972 by Gerald Genta, designed in 1976 by Gerald Genta. And, I mean, come on. It's not like you have to look very far to see where the inspiration came from. Right, of course. He's going back to that same well. Well, everything comes from somewhere. Uh, you yeah, can't, sure, of course. Th you know, if he hadn't designed this, Paddock probably wouldn't have responded with this. 100%. I don't know if they would have gone the same way in terms of fighting the court's crisis of Agreed. the time. Agreed. But I, I am intrigued by you putting the paddock in the melt box. Um, so I think I think that shows you how you can take three pretty amazing watches and yet find something in it that will appeal to whatever your particular sense of style or right. history or fashion or watchmaking that, that really draws you in. So uh, we're curious to see. Put in the comments, which are you wearing? Which are you keeping? And which is slag? Who do you agree with and who was wrong? <laughs> to wrap things up, for me, my wearer is the Royal Oak. My keeper is the Paddock Nautilus. And my melt box is the Daytona. And mine, wear the Rolex Daytona. Just durable, you can do whatever you want with it. My collect, AP Royal Oak 15202. And my melt, this piece, the Paddock 
Nautilus 5711. So thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you taking the time. Let us know what you think in the comments, and we really appreciate it if you could uh, hit that like and subscribe button.